Alrighty folks, we are back with the dramatic conclusion of the High Country Open. We have seen some fantastic shots all weekend long and now for the final round, I am joined once again by the course and property owner himself, Mr. Paul Stiller. How we doing, Paul? Corey, thanks for having me on again. I'm really looking forward to this. It is, uh, it's gonna be nice to talk some disc golf. It is, and we have had a ton of great action this weekend. Chandler Fry and Parker Wealth setting themselves apart from the rest of the field, looking like a two-person battle. But Andrew Fish and Noah Higgins joining us on this lead card for the final round. Paul, this one's for Ian. Let's watch some disc golf. Never thought you'd ask. <laughs> a whole one here on the mother load course, par four, 636 feet. This one is a doozy to get your round started, Paul. This is one of the most demanding tee shots on the entire course, especially if the wind is coming from the right to left, pushing you away from the OB. You really have to flirt with the OB and it will push you into good graces. Yeah, on the tee shot, really that right side is what you're worried about. Uh, OB line lining the fairway. If you go a little too straight, Chandler, ready to get things started. Uh, if you do go a little bit too long, there is OB in that pond, but really that flat to a baby left finish at the end of the flight is what Chandler's going to be looking for here. A little pulled. Yeah, it looks like he got that flight mm. plate turned... A little bit on Annie out of his hand and finds the out of bounds, unfortunately. Not what he wanted. Parker going Captain's Raptor into the perfect spot. That's Pressure's an, on, Paul. Excellent shot to start off the day. Chandler, obviously, with that three stroke lead, um, you know, a little bit of mistake or a few mistakes maybe built into that lead, but you do not want to be losing anything early. Uh, Andrew Fish with a fantastic second round over on Caliber earning his spot up onto this lead card. And I love his game for this course. So good at throwing those flip up straight shots. I believe that's gonna be a vulture right into the middle of the fairway. Another fantastic shot. And I really enjoyed his commentary on round one. Yeah, it was really a blast. I had never done it with him and it turned out really good. Uh, Noah Higgins, you might have seen him in some of our Canadian coverage, the Falcons flight a uh, year, two, three years ago. Uh, really powerful thrower, and overall just like a fun, good-natured human. That's going to play also. Mm -hmm. He's not hooked. Yeah, Noah came up to me and said, Wow, Corey, Johnny Disc Golf, I've been watching your stuff since I was literally 13. I thought that was just like a really, it's just a cool moment. So Chandler here addressing his lie out of that out of bounds. You can see the line right to his right. Not a good spot to be. That's a good safe play there. Don't try to bite off more than you need. Put yourself in position to get up and down now for the par. Or bogey because he went out of bounds. Yeah, four throws, five strokes. Um, Parker in position for the birdie, so potential two-stroke swing here on the first hole. Mm. Noah trying to get a little aggressive on that corner. It can really pay the price, though. Off to the left is trouble. We saw Marweed kind of throw this same kind of a loopy sidearm, not the committed turn that you might want on that approach. Parker going to zone approach. Oh, interesting. This shot takes some more gusto than you would think, mm -hmm. not only because of the uphill, because now you have a tailwind and it's gonna to try to smash you into the ground, which it did. Yep, he's got about 23 or 25 from the side of that hill. Noah, ooh, clean somehow, but back side of the, back side of the green, no good. That's a thicket down there and I'll have to get Herman in there to <laughs> clean it up. I love it. This is as we watch, oh Chandler, cool it. It's almost like a to-do list that we're watching. It's kind of fun. <laughs> uh, Chandler, a little bit too much gusto on that sidearm is gonna have a tricky Harder than you want. Bogey save. Yeah, nothing quite doing. But a par on this hole, totally fine. You're you're not too hurt. 
Chandler here. Tough green, too. You airball it, it blows by. A lot of danger. Speaking of, oh my gosh. Parker with the smooth moves, trying to avoid the stroke, but... Noah's buried. Okay. That's about all he could do there. That's tough. Chandler here, mission critical double bogey save with Parker about 25 feet from the birdie. Oh, fantastic <laughs> putt. Oh, my gosh. We'll stem the tides a little bit. Um, you don't want to see the pink with the two lines there on the first hole, but... Man, clutch putt. If Parker makes this, though, three strokes, first hole erased. Tricky lie, dealing with some brushes, some grass right in his face. Going to have to release that up at the chest. I think he plays well for his putt. Sneaks it in. Paul, we got ourselves a game. Way to clean it up, Parker. Good. There you have it. Matching 18s. What was once three is now zero. And we've got ourselves an absolute dogfight between Parker and Chandler. A course like this, too, you know, a lot of trees in between now and 18. So we see Parker just stinging that one through the grass. This was an overplanted. Um, piece of land that was intended on being logged and they never thinned it so I came in and thinned out and made a disc golf course out of it. <laughs> Thus the huge slash piles you see which I have a plan on grinding. Yeah I, I think it's important to note uh, as we fly through hole two here par three uh, 352 feet basic sidearm shot or a really committed backhand turnover. Um, but we're going to see some stick piles, and I say stick piles, but I mean like full-blown tree piles. Uh, throughout the course, they're marked with relief zones, but you're welcome to play from your lie if you need to. This is the first tournament ever played on this course, correct, Paul? This is correct. This is a pretty roughed-in course, and there's some big brush traps out there. Mm -hmm. So, all the players know they've got plenty of practice laps. They played the first round on them. It's just kind of how this course plays right now. Parker is playing this course very well right now. Parker's Routine parking bird. it. Yeah, Parker's parked. Fish looking to match. Likely going Raptor. That's going to play well. Really, if you hit the gap with the correct level of stability, it, the disc really just wants to fall right into the baskets. I think this one, hole two, um, you know, Maybe there's one other hole coming up a little bit later that might be the easiest hole, but this one feels like one of those muskets. Yeah. This can also be a little bit tricky in the wind, although it's not that windy today. If you get that flight plate, the bottom of it, too exposed, it's going to take you right or pin you and take you straight. Chandler looking to get back on track after the oof, demoralizing double bogey off the top, and he looks to be back. Noah here, a little bit longer than he'd like to be, kind of scooted out the backside of the green, is going to have 28 to about 32 feet, somewhere in that range, circle's edge. Bit of a tester to get started. I'm not too familiar with Noah's game, but I look forward to it. Boy, does he get some snap on the... <laughs> Yeah. Disc, when he coils up, it is really impressive to watch. Great start there. Solid putt. Um, you know, can be very nervy. You're not necessarily used to playing on cameras. You're on the lead card, final round. Good to see him stepping up, banging that one. Speaking of stepping up, Fish wastes no time staring at the basket and looming over his lie. A very unique putting uh, routine. Parker, two through two. He's on a roll. Mm -hmm. Parker started off fantastically in the front nine of our round one coverage, just lighting it up with green all over the scorecard. Um, 
I think his game plays really well out here. He's got great backhand, great sidearm, lots of power. As Chandler cleans up his birdie, we find ourselves with the star frame. Also loved having the card with uh, Chandler and Fish. They're such good buddies. It was a uh, great camaraderie all day. Absolutely. Great putt there by Noah too. This next hole is going to play with a tailwind. Mm. And the smart play on this hole as we go up through the main gap is on the left high up towards the rock if you can get it there, but on the left is going to open up the shot and straighten out the trees so they're not so pixeled. Yeah, it really has like a, a candy cane element up at the top of this fairway, so if you can throw that big backhand that has a baby left skip finish, it really straightens it out so you can throw either a big sidearm or a really technical turning backhand. Um, eagle opportunity is in play, but you just gotta be way up there off the tee shot. Parker looking to get way up there. Okay, he's all right. So you see that shed uh, over there on the left side? We saw Neil Bishop make contact with it during our first round, but really as long as you're wide of that uh, or a little bit long, you're all right. It's the being behind it that gets tricky. I'd like to find a spray paint artist to put a uh, oh. big colorful bam on it so when you hit it, you see <laughs> and hear the report. I love I love private courses so much. Noah, though, going boom boom on this backhand. That's a smash. That is the position you're looking for to realistically give it an eagle look. Chandler played it nice and up the middle. Last lap on this course, looking to do the same. A little too turned, though. But he ended up on the left side of the Ooh. fairway, which will open up the angle for him. Opened up, but he is pinched right here. Going to go Centurion for some kind of nice and easy distance. Fairway driver kind of leopardy. Okay, that's not where you want to be. No. Should be noted, there is a Mando on the right side of this fairway, um, mainly so that you're not throwing right over hole two's tee pad, but it forces you to go left side of this fairway. Parker going huge on the nuke. Wow, what a dream to watch a shot like that. All hyzer, I mean, it had some glide, but that was not a flex shot. He is on the green for three. I loved watching Fish throw this. The dismount on that sidearm. Yep. Get that bag out of here. Yeah. And what's a good boyfriend to do but clean up the mess? That's a go. good position <laughs> he took up on the upper left, though. Yeah. Noah going for this big turner. A little bit late. Yeah, he does catch the tree, but he's in a great spot to approach the basket for birdie. Chandler, though, this is where you do not want to be after two. Okay, looks like he's putting himself back in position. He should be able to get up and down easily from there. Yeah, nice conservative play. Granted, Parker's like up on the green for three. Now this is Chandler throwing four. Let's go. All right, good enough. He's in good position and a fantastic pro that knows that the most important shot in golf is mm -hmm. the next one. Yes. Good approach there by fish this is a tough approach too it's gentle downhill now there's a flat that the basket is on but a little bit too much air you are down that hill good fluffy approach almost giving it a chance to go in okay just touchy enough makeable putt there from noah See now, okay, here we go. Dave, wow, Parker is closer than this? Scary putt, vegetation, hillside behind it. Slightly blown out image. Good 
Good solid putt. Excellent, Noah. Way to get up and down from up there. Noah putts with the P Model S. Uh, slightly shallower, more straight putter. Prodigy player. Al Parker. This, this is just unbelievable after two shots, really. I, I mean... From where he was... Yeah, the second shot was unreal. It's hard to understand how how far that is unless you put yourself in that position. Yes, Excellent. <laughs> Good link up on that top right side, admittedly, but that's a blue on the scorecard. Double circle. Yeah. Eagle for Parker. He's four down through three. Chandler, what happened to the lead? These baskets do catch very well high on the outside. Fish stepping off. He had a couple of those later in the round uh, over at Caliber yesterday. It's not very fish-like. He's usually so consistent on the green, but I will say, even with a miss like that, fish is a treat to be around. He doesn't let it affect his, his mood or his vibe. Chandler needs it. Excellent. Good job. Good job, good putt, but another hole where he's losing two strokes this time. That is five strokes difference in the first three holes. Chandler started up three, now he's back two. It'd be hard to tell from Chandler's demeanor because he carries himself very well and very hard to tell if he's pressed or not. Very true, and uh, I'll tell you right now, he's pressed. Right. But the United States Disc Golf Championship. A tournament with history unmatched in the disc golf world. Oh, you bet! Colin Hanley is on fire. Wow. Talk about giving the crowd a show. What a performance from Kyle Klein. Gannon Berg, this kid is unbelievable. And we are back, hole four, 214 feet of pure terror. Gosh, this hole reminds me of being back home in Northern California. Paul, when you walk up to this the first time in your property, is that, how do you even envision a hole here? Well, when my friend Kendall and I found the rock, I knew that this could be one of those traditional disc golf holes of old, where you need some power, you need some touch, and it's a pretty tricky green if you miss it. Yeah, uphill, relatively straightforward. I think the sidearm uh, plays better with the shape of the fairway and the shape of the hill. It kind of runs up the hill instead of maybe falling away. So I think Parker might have just an inherent advantage here. Mm. That's it? still going to play. It's fairly tight, so it's gonna keep you from being more than 30 from the basket mm -hmm. on the right. Green does fall away to the left, so I think if you had to choose, you might take the left side of the fairway, putting uphill. Um, Noah looking to improve on Parker's shot. A little high. Yeah. Okay. Good little kind of that's drifty a good side arm, but that's good. You're that's a good play, side. and he will have a putt. Chandler going Centurion on the backhand. Uh, things are kind of devolving here for Chandler. Good recovery. Yep. This is a seemingly easy hole unless you catch one of those early trees and then you've got a, a, a tester up and down with some meat on the bone. Yeah, no question. Noah looking to maybe fling this one in from long distance. I think likely a par incoming though, this seems like a really low percentage putt. Yeah, yeah, that's tough to even just fully commit to with the slightly elevated basket as well. Parker here, this is a gut check moment for me. Slightly downhill behind the basket. 
He's gained five strokes on three holes. How confident is he in the aggression? Wow, Parker is on fire here. Very confident. And there is no hail and rain to put him out. Yeah, Parker, I mean, it, birdie, birdie, eagle, birdie. And none of them seems particularly difficult. He is just right down the middle with all these. He makes it look like uh, that's the way to go, and there's no, no issues with it. Yeah, Fish drops in his birdie. That is going to be a two down through four start. Chandler. Oh, just trying to stop the bleeding. Another stroke loss. That's going to be six in four holes. Oof, unfortunately, we've got a complete flip-flop. It's three strokes in the other direction. Good finish, Noah. Noah had some love out there in the crowd for sure. And Paul, kudos to you as we see Parker slinging this one in from deep. But we had a little bit of a gallery out there. Um, you know, we're a bit of the ways, we're a ways out here in the mountains. Um, you know, a thousand people, probably not what we'd expect. But I would say a very respectful and a professionally rowdy gallery that we had out there. Yeah, we had some folks. We we're trying to keep them in control and uh, educate them on how to view disc golf. Uh, how to use the triangulated areas on the holes to pivot to give the pros plenty of uh, privacy and uh, still have fun watching them without crowding them out. Yeah, I, as we watched hole five here, as we watch hole five here from the drone, par four, 534. One of those holes where huge distance uh, can gain you a massive advantage on the second shot, uh, but a simple placement shot can earn you the birdie as well. I think for these super top pros, we're gonna be seeing just a, try to go as big as you can with the backhand, go for the eagle, and this is kind of your bailout zone. It's not a bad spot to be. Yeah, and he took it about 35 or 40 feet further than he did yesterday. Mm -hmm. He should have a pretty easy up and down for another birdie. Fish looking to match the line. My guess is he's, oh, trying the outside route. Ouch. And he has found a good old-fashioned nightmare pile. <laughs> That's a brush trap. Shouts to Brian Geis, our slow-mo camera operator this weekend. Always fun to get him on screen. Noah going FX4 here. Kind of that Isaac Robinson threaded straight shot he's going for. Found some life there. Definitely missed the gap, but uh, he's going to be approaching from maybe 3.30. Yeah, he doesn't look too hooked. No. Chandler here, though, really needs to get things back in the groove. He's just going to pound this one up the middle. I think a little... Wow, gosh. When you turn the camera operator, that's a good thing. But he's pretty much right in Parkerville. So this, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Paul, I know in your heart of hearts you don't love seeing this. I can tell. I can feel it. This is one of the ugly sides to mother load. I hope to get a big industrial grinder in here and grind down these piles over the years. There's going to be a big transformation in this mm -hmm. course for folks who see it now and come back in years to come. So I hear you say I hope to do it. I don't think there's any part of you that hopes this thing's going to get done. It's going to get done. Um, but I will say, though, yes, you don't love to see it. On the flip side, for me, this brings me back to like playing golf. I feel like I've played tournaments, so many tournaments, where I'm thrown out of a stick pile or something like this. There's an element of, of adventure to these golf courses that I think it is enjoyable. I love it. Absolutely. Unfortunately, there was a lot of carnage on this piece of property, and I had to do what I had to do mm -hmm. and get rid of the trees that had no business being there that were almost dead anyway. Well, I'll tell you what, the work does not go unnoticed. These fairways are beautiful, and they're only going to get better with time. Noah, just a bit back from that 261 sign, probably pitching up for his par from there. Speaking of playing for par, I love this outside route from Fish, drifting it back into the middle. That's a good up. When you are by those rocks out there, this hole seems much longer than just being up. As soon as you get your eye on the basket, it doesn't seem too far. When you play from a deficit like that, it's a, it's a much tougher shot, but he made it look pretty easy. Parker, just a nice, nice soft approach here. Yeah, it leaves it a little short, but that's within 20 feet. I think that's going to be no trouble here. Now, Chandler, 
I feel like in his heart of hearts, he feels like he has to make this. That's a good save, birdie. Yeah. I'm sure he's not stoked with the birdie, but at this point, with the round that he's working on right now, I think just green is good. No, I'm not going to send this one home. You know he's looking for highlights out here. The win is probably out of reach, but this is about making a name for yourself and showing the people what you got. Not quite the juice, maybe a little overcommitted. He's going to have a, a bit more on the bone there in the comebacker, but Fish looking to clean up his par after just a strange way to play the hole. There you go, Andrew. I love watching Fish play. I'm going to I'm gonna go like little old school Central Coast. He reminds me a lot, as Chandler makes sure I filmed his tapping out. <laughs> Uh, his form, his flow, kind of his energy at times really reminds me of Jeff Faze, uh, who's been on a lot of Central Coast in the past. It just took second at Masters Worlds. Wanted to give him a quick shout out, but uh, yeah, a lot of fun watching fish. You know what needs to clean up here? I'm not too familiar with Fish's game, but uh, he's fun to watch. It, it looks like he's got touch. He's got all the shots in the bag. This should be exciting. Parker continues his onslaught on this front nine. That is five straight scoring holes, six under through five holes. We're on like Macbeth alert at this point. Yeah, we're, he we're... is He is just putting on a clinic, showing everybody how it should be done and what is possible out here. Next year, this will have a pro pad. Ooh. The pro pad is in a little bit of a deficit and didn't have enough room for uh, filmers and whatnot, so... They had to play from the advanced amp pad. Well, I'll tell you what, they turned the advanced amp pad into a professional environment. I'm like it, seeing guys rip shots down tunnels, even from the amp pad, I don't care. It's fun to watch. Uh, hole six, though, this one is a real tricky one, honestly. The one over the valley, kind of reminiscent of a hole a little bit later in the course, 17. But you're throwing over this valley and onto a hillside. The trick is, it makes you think you really want to bite it left off the tee, but I think just that straight shot into the hillside and setting yourself up with a view of the basket is mission critical here. Critical here. It's definitely not one you want to saw off. This is a demanding shot. This is one of my favorite shots on the mm -hmm. course. I'm left-handed, and I've birdied it twice, and it just tastes so good when it happens. <laughs> we'll see Parker here, likely going quake. Yeah, that green quake he's been throwing all over the place this weekend. Well, I, I mean, favorable flight after hitting an early. Because if you hit early and you're sitting on this hillside, that is trouble. You can be doubly hooked in there. Chandler going to what I believe is a Nebula Ethereal Pathfinder. That's looking good. That is in one of the sweet spots. Yep. As long as you're up on that hill, pushing that tree line, you're going to be in business. It's that low left that's trouble. If you do choose on going left, you need to make a late, soft left finish and keep it on that hillside, preferably on, on the upper right, of course. Fish with a tricky approach from there really doesn't set himself up for success with that tee shot, but I think given how wide it was, you'll take where it finished. Noah looking to just kind of stem the tide here. Has some bogeys, but uh, this one is in his range. Oh, a little early. Gosh, he's going to be in that kind of second set of bunker trees down there. Now, there's some gaps through the trees, but they're not big. No one's excited about having to take them. Parker with a whole lot of nothing. Whoa. I mean, good fight through the trees. That could have got knocked down early and been bad. I think I saw him taking a glimpse to see if he could go up and over uh, <laughs> the moose route. Yeah, I, was... I saw you dialing up Amando just with him thinking about it. I have a course tester named Moose, and he's done all things possible out here. Some with success, some with failure. <laughs> That looks like a good shot by Andrew there. Wonderful gap to hit, really. I mean, the one five-by-five five gap that he was going to be able to make it up the fairway. 
It's successful Chandler with an opportunity to gain a stroke back here, though. Going Praxis. Oh. Ugh, man. That's he, frustrating. That is he frustrating. Was, he was in a really good spot there. And with how the round's going, you really want to see him capitalize on a moment like that. Noah can't quite fight the trees like Fish did, but should be a pretty routine par at least. A lot of golf left here. Yeah, I always say it. A lot of trees between here and 18. There's no reason to hang your head. Just keep fighting. I love watching Chandler throw soft putter shots. I, I, yeah. They're not the most, uh, you know, they're not going 500 feet. They're not full flexing around a corner, but it's just so buttery smooth. Nice little chip. One, one thing I really love about, I mean, both courses really, but we're just talking about this one, is how dynamic a lot of the, the, a lot of the greens are. Almost none. I mean, maybe hold two it's on a flat, but basically none of the greens can you kind of check out and just lob one up in there. Some of these layups can be tricky uh, because of the pine straw. You really mm -hmm. have to be careful with it. You know, uh, greens in disc golf are much different than greens in traditional golf. So you have to take advantage of subtle slopes in order to add some integrity into some of these holes. Yeah, and Fish looking to capitalize on his really good upshot from out of position. Nice. And he does. Keep grinding. You got to. So, Excellent. Paul, we played caliber yesterday, green grass fairways, lush, slightly different vegetation than this course. Um, is that something that this is a new course as we see Noah and the rest of the guys tap out so we don't have grass on the fairway or is this just a different environment so there probably is going to be more pine straw than grass just kind of forever? There's going to be a lot of changes in the future. I need to get a realistically I need to get up to a third of the trees out of this course because there's still a lot of dead and dying stuff so I don't want to plant it out until I've gotten that out or I'm going to destroy the fairways. This is very tannin rich and acidic soil, more so here than on caliber. So I think I should be able to plant rye and clover. There's gonna be a lot of bushes, uh, namely Oregon grape, that's gonna to wanna to come back in these fairways. So the fairways are gonna be dictated on what wants to grow where. So if there's some grass and clover growing, I'll mow that. If bushes wanna come back, I'll mow that. Kind of reminds me of some of the courses in Oregon that have bushes and uh, a mix of stuff in the woods. No, absolutely. And uh, it just the fact, the, the, the thought process, the care, the TLC that's been given to this course and, and the property in general is, I mean, honestly, it's just inspiring. It makes me want to focus better on my craft and be a little knowledgeable in general. Uh, hole seven, this one is one of the funkier shaped holes I've ever had the pleasure of filming. It is a water carry over uh, off the tee, and it kind of baits you into thinking that you want it to hook left. I think that's kind of a theme on this hole, but or on this course. But straight is really the priority. You got to beat these trees over the lake and push, push, push towards that sunlit rock. As close as you can get there, the better. Yep, that is an excellent shot right there. That'll give them good shape uh, to attack and get in good position for a birdie or an eagle. Yeah, I think I think. A lot of these players are, are thinking eagle. Um, I, I don't know, though. I, uh, I I think just playing for a safe par on this one might be the best bet. You see my big net there? I call that the, uh, the big green monster, reminiscent yeah. of Fenway Park. It's huge, too. Like, do you just go into a Uline store and say, I need the, a, a sheet the size of, like, I don't know, the Great Wall or something? Well, it's a privacy screen that you see on uh, both courses here and there. It helps really define that uh, mandatory and give you some eye candy from the box and uh, remind you where that mando is. And there's no mistaking if you miss it because you're going to hit the net. So Very there's true. no discrepancy in arguments out there it's a good point it, it's a wall i mean you're not gonna yeah the, it takes a question out of it uh parker here back of the box looking to get back on track Ooh, going boom boom and long of the rock that was a crush with his brand new venom long of the rock works too it should give him a decent angle to make progress so you see noah's up first he might have the best angle but he is the furthest from the pin 
Mm. This one's tough. You want that straight finish due to the hillside uh, of the fairway up here, but you really got to put some stink on it. That looks like it should be in good position there by Chandler. I think Chandler's feeling a little frustrated at this point. Going into the day, I think he was licking his chops three strokes up and now having to chase, you know, over a 45, 50 minute period, just the world completely shifted upside down. Parker in a good spot, especially with that sidearm. Okay. That's wow. not gonna that's not gonna hurt him. Honestly, good finish. I thought that had a outside chance of oh stop. Oh. Outside chance of kind of cut rolling on him. So the fact that it found edge and scooted. He got he did get a nice roll there. Fish going with the force over sidearm. A little too much angle, but I think he's right there for his uh his birdie. Noah's in a bit of a pickle here after that errant second shot. Okay, that yep. tree saved him from a really bad spot. Chandler finds himself behind a tree again. He was just a little bit high on that right side. Not what he wants, I'm sure. He, re I think at this point, he's kind of uh, really wants to force the issue. Way for Fish to take advantage of that wall, use it to his, his advantage, and get him down by the pin. Yeah, everybody was kind of saying that uh, it seems like the play... Oh, Parker. <laughs> that was a good save. Wow, when it's your day, it's your day. That thing was doomed off the side of that cliff. Absolutely. Another safe layup, taking advantage of the backstop. Yeah, I, I really think playing off the side of that hill to the right side, as Chandler just lays up simply uh, for his par, playing that right side hillside seems like the play. Just jam it into the hill a little bit. It usually always filters back. Yep. Parker from 24 feet. These are the strokes you really need to get back. You get a beautiful break off the tree, and he capitalizes. I really like this hole because you have a power shot off the tee, you've got a blind shot for your second shot, and you've got a touch shot coming in. So it definitely tests all the different skill sets. No question. This property, you know, in general, I feel like is, it, it's so important to know the holes intimately. You know, you could get up there, you could shoot a good score when you don't realize where the danger is per se. You're kind of just chucking it. But it's that rounds two, three, four, five where you actually know where all the misses are that you start to ooh, question your decision making, I think. First time I found this hole, wow. I I was up there cheering uh, and just really <laughs> dream, yeah, dreamed of watching these guys throw discs like that and uh, just enjoy it. Yeah, it's got to be a treat. I mean, all the hours spent out here by yourself with a small group of people, whoever it is, churning and burning through these courses, this is the celebration weekend, right? This is absolutely the dreams coming true to a degree. Absolutely. A whole eight, speaking of a dream coming true, I love teeing off on this one. A beautiful tunnel shot with a little bit of a hill cresting the fairway so you can't quite see the landing zone. You're going to want a perfectly straight shot and a baby left finish if you're playing for a birdie. But if you're Chandler, if you're Parker, I think you're going to be trying to just go bananas and rip this one to the green. Yeah, put a nice flex on it. And this is another hole where there is a pro pad incoming. Uh, I know you've already kind of set aside the area, did a bit of work starting it. but Yep, uh, yep. I need to smarten up that area so that uh, it's more challenging for these guys. Fish finding another branch reserve over there and Parker kind of coming up on that pile as well. Should be noted if you're in those pile, you can always go straight back from the basket. It's just that a lot of times that doesn't put you in a very appealing situation. This would be a fantastic driving hole. If you can control that late flip, there's a lot of room over there on the right to work it. Oh boy. Speaking That's, of a lot of room on the right. Oh boy. 
I've been there. I'm a lefty. No, oh, you've been on the other fairway? <laughs> I've been on the other fairway. You can play down hole seven if you know where the gap coming uh -huh. is, coming back to the pin is. Noah, just pitching up to the middle now really needs to get up and down. Tricky green, though. We saw Marweed go a little bit long straight. I'm not quite controlling the angle during round one, but looks like he had his distance there for Noah. Fish looks like he's becoming the master of the brush. <laughs> it feels right. In the woods, fish in his, his happy element out here. Oh, what a shot. That's one of those things, like, you don't get to throw off of a downed tree all that often, so I kind of I feel like I just take yeah. advantage of it. Yeah, you just have to have some balance, which he displayed there. That's going to be a tester. Yeah, longer than Parker wants, of course. I think he was struggling a little bit with the footing. Chandler, easy peasy up and down. Like you said, I love his up shots. He's got the slow motion hand release. He gets a good nose up, very controllable. Thought he had made it. Good bid is gonna seed another stroke likely to Chandler. So from three to two, and the chase is on. Oh, Noah, you're better than that. I do know that. Good strong stiff putt from Fish there. I love to see it. And he's quietly putting together a fantastic round. I mean, five mm -hmm. down through eight holes. Chandler giving it up. Andrew's got a good, solid game. He is gaining momentum here, uh, sneaking up on the, sneaking up on the big guys. I mean, sneaking up on Chandler, honestly. I mean, Welk at this point, uh, you know, is going to tap in for the par. It's going to take some mistakes on his end for probably anyone but Chandler to catch him. But Fish doing all he can. Look at that little modified fan grip too. It's something that I think a lot of players could you stand to benefit from is figuring out how to master that fan grip and throw with a little bit more control. That's what I've evolved into as far as my grip. I started throwing in the 80s when you throw with two fingers on the disc and then three and then naturally stuck them all in there and smashed them down and it's the <laughs> stack fan. Uh, hole nine, par three, 321 feet downhill navigating these beautiful tall, what trees are they? Uh, most of these are Idaho white pine. Okay. There are some western larch in there. So the biggest danger to really think about on the tee pad is this lake behind the tee that you can see here. Uh, maybe a pond, depending on the size. But uh, out of bounds left, brush pile short right. As these guys are going to get testy with. But uh, as long as you're keeping it out of that out of bounds, it's likely a two or a three on this one. Chandler going to the sidearm. A little bit more committed on the nose angle than, oh, than fish, but. This was one of the most overplanted pieces on mm. the property. I took out over 100 trees <laughs> on this hole oh and had 48 stumps ground. Wow. Most of the Lincoln log structures you see came from this hole. I mean, that's unbelievable. Just the, the vision to shape out this fairway. As Noah puts it, whew, beautifully close to the pin. This one took a while. I had to go back and forth and back and forth and make sure I was getting the right line. Nobody really throwing too inspiring a shots. Noah, the closest, about 24, 27 feet. Fish eyeing it up. Oh, he wanted it. He thought he had it. Parker here, chance to get that stroke back that he just lost on the last hole. No dice, but even when he's missing putts, he is right on that thing. Ah, Noah. This basket must have a force field around it. Yeah, cold basket right now. Very cold basket. I love the canoe people in the lake too it's such a fun touch i mean a they're getting the discs back which is awesome but then it's just like i don't know it's just a fun aesthetic to have a guy in a canoe floating yeah. around out there same guy he was committed on the other really? course yesterday perfect i love it 
I always wanted to bring out like a slight aside, a kayak cam at one of the tournaments. If there's a big lake, just throw a live camera on that kayak. Right. Chandler, everyone else tapping in their pars. No action on this hole. Kind of surprising, to be honest with you. Oh, fun shot, Mr. Geis. Yeah, the structure's out on this hole. Beautiful. Up by the tee, the log work, everything. It's fun to be around. I find that putting things like that, rocks and building some things like that on a course like this that have so many tall trees, it breaks up the monotony. Mm -hmm. It gives you a little bit better depth perception. Mm -hmm. And you have something to go by, like up 15 feet short of that rock, or I want to go left of that. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a little bit of uh, you know, better understanding on where you want to go. Well, no question. Plus, it just... It adds to the experience. It gives the, uh, an aesthetic, a feel. Like it, it elevates the entire experience to have big infrastructure-like things going on. You know, whether it's built-up tea pads or or greens that have a bunch of TLC or these giant Lincoln Log-style blockers. Uh, it's just fun to be around. I think this course really lends itself for features uh, in the future because of some of the monotony of the trees. It's a very large course. Yeah large course but the back nine may be the most diabolical of the bunch can't wait to check that out for now we're just going to leave it with a two stroke separation parker has already made up five from when we started you see that six down to one down front nine i can't wait to see chandler scrap and claw his way back in this back nine absolutely this is going to be fun make sure to tune in